Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll take a look at server caching in Node.js. We're going to use the Express server and we're going to use a package called Node Cache to do our caching. So the first step is to import our packages that we need. So that's going to be the Express package. And then you want to import Node Fetch. This is going to let you make HTTP call uh, across the server and you want the actual caching package that's gonna be node cache. There you go. The next step is to actually instantiate an object for your cache. That's gonna be, let's just call it my cache. Let's create an object over here and you can pass it a bunch of options so the only one we care about right now is the ttl this means how long does your data stay in the cache in seconds so if you insert a key in this cache it's going to stay there for 10 seconds and then just disappear uh, okay so we're done with most of the packages the next thing we're going to do is actually create our server and give it a port, let's say 3000. Let's save it. Um, yeah, so the, the HTTP call we're gonna make is to this just of some JSON placeholder to get a bunch of to-dos. We're gonna make the call without any caching and then we're gonna use caching to see what kind of performance uh, improvement can you get. So this is going to be our URL. I'll just copy paste the URL. There you go. So that just literally returns you a list of uh, to do's, which are like more data. There you go. And let's create our first endpoint, which is going to be, let's just call it to do's. It's going to take in a request response. And for now, let's just send back hello world. We just want to see if this is working or not. Um, once, now that we have that, let's actually start the server. It's going to be listening to our port. And let's give it a callback so that we know that it's running. So let's just give it a template string here. That's going to be example server is running at port and then let's use the port number there you go uh, let's kick off the server now so we're gonna just do uh open the current place yes so we're just gonna do a node index.js the server is running at port, port 3000 let's try to hit the server using postman so we can do we can just hit it there and so the endpoint is called posts. For some reason, we are getting an error. Let's see why. Uh, oh, they are called to-dos. There you go. And we're getting the hello world back. Uh, so now, instead of returning the hello world, we want to actually return whatever we're getting from that to-do's uh, endpoint. So what we want to do is just make the fetch call to the to-do's URL. And then uh, once we do it, the response comes back. We're gonna turn the response into JSON. And then when that comes back, that is going to be the actual JSON object. Let's just uh, send the JSON object back. Okay, so let's see what we're doing here. We're making a fetch request to our to-do's endpoint. We're getting the response back and then turning it into JSON. Once it's turned into JSON, we're just sending it back uh, from our server. So let us restart our server here and make the request now. Let's see what we're getting. 
So we're using the same endpoint, hit it, and you see we're getting the whole list of JDs. And one thing to note here is that it's taking 140 milliseconds to get it. If we hit it a few more times, you can see it's going to get 75, 69. So it's always above 50 milliseconds, and sometimes like even more than 100. So let's see how we can like reduce it. So this is where the caching layer comes in. So what we want to do is mm, every time we get the list of to-dos back from this URL, we're going to cache the data in memory. And the next time there is a request that comes to our server, instead of making the HTTP call to the JSON placeholder uh, website, we're going to just return it from our cache. Right. So the first thing we want to do is put the data in our cache whenever we get it. So that's going to be over here. So instead of sending it immediately, what we can do is we can do the mycache.set. You give it a key. For us, it's going to be to-dos. And then let's give it the JSON. right? And then we can just return it. So what this is doing is it's getting the JSON, which is the list of to-dos. It's sticking it into the cache uh, with the key name to-dos. So that if you look at the cache with the key name to do's, you can get the JSON, uh, the whole JSON list, right? Um, so yeah, uh, let's try this out to see if anything broke or not first, right? Mm, we're gonna run the server again. There you go. And we're gonna hit the API again. Okay, so we're still getting it, still is taking around more than 50 milliseconds. So we're averaging like 60 to 70, right? Nothing changed, but now we know that every time we're getting the data, we're storing it in the cache. So the next step would be, now that we have it in the cache, we want to return it from the cache if it is already there, right? Remember, we have the 10 second TTL. Uh, so we, the 10 second that the data is in there, we want to actually return it from the cache instead of making this fetch request. So to do that, what we can do is we can have a check here, which checks if our cache actually has the key. If it does, you can just return it from the cache, which is going to be, uh, so you want to, if it's there, you just want to return it. So you want to just do my cache.get and then the key. Right, and if it is not there, then you do this part, which is make the HTTP call. There you go. So what you're doing essentially is you're getting the request, you're checking if it's already there in the cache. If it is there in the cache, then you're returning it from the cache by doing this get operation. If it is not there, you go into this else block and uh, you make the API request get the response back, stick it in the cache, and then return the response so that the next time around, the state is there in the cache for how many every seconds you mentioned. Uh, let's also just like put a few console logs so that we know which lines we're hitting. So let's just do a console log, uh, getting it from cache. And here we're gonna just do a console log, getting it from API, right? Okay, so let's uh, restart our server. There you go. And then let's hit it now. So the first time we're hitting it, it's doing 92 millisecond. Now the data is there in the cache, right? So see the next ones are taking 19, 22, 20, 20, very little. And now hopefully 10 seconds has passed. And now that we make the request again, it should take longer, like 60 to 70 millisecond, because we are going to be hitting the, the JSON placeholder API again. And as you can see, it's taking 70 milliseconds. If we look at the logs, the first time it got from the API, and then the bunch of time it got the data from the cache, and finally, uh, when 10 seconds passed, uh, or whatever you put the TTL, we're getting it from the API again. Uh, so yeah, and another thing I want to show you is regarding 
any kind of statistic you want to see about the cache. So let's see how many times you're hitting the cache or if there are cache misses or uh, whatever you want to know about the cache, which is pretty straightforward to do. So let's create another endpoint and let's call it stats request response again. And we are just gonna, uh, uh, we can just send it back, I think. We can just do what was done send. And then we're just gonna do the cache. And they have a function called get stats. So let's try this out. Let's actually just send whatever response the stats function is giving us, right? I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna restart the server. And then let's take a look. Let's hit it. So this is the to-do endpoint, right? So we want to do the stats endpoint. See, we're getting a bunch of statistics related to it. Um, you can see hits, the number of times you actually got the data from the cache misses is how many times you're missing it. And then you have a bunch of other metadata related to related to the size. So let's see how this hits number changes. So let's hit our posts endpoint, sorry, to-do's endpoint. 84 milliseconds, so we're getting it from the API. Now we're getting it cache from the cache, so there should be a cache hit. Cache hit again, and cache hit again. Let's check our stats endpoint. And yeah, you're getting three hits over here. Uh, that's pretty much all, guys. Uh, hopefully this is gonna help you speed up your server by implementing cache in Node.js. If you like the video, please leave a like. If you have any comments, put it down in the comment section below. And I'm gonna get back to you whenever I can. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.